today's video, we're going to be showing you how to install a suspension plate on this top load washer. So to install your suspension plate, you just go to set it down on top of your frame assembly, and it doesn't matter which way it goes, and you'll see it floats nicely in place. So with that mounted in there, we're now able to take our frame assembly and set it into place. So we'll start with the back bracket and you'll see that it has the word up on it with a little arrow. So that is pointing to up as, as in regards to the top of the machine. So the bracket also has a little finger that protrudes and that finger goes into the hole in the plastic tub. So you just line that up, put it into place, and tighten it up. So we'll just bring that rear suspension spring up and we'll hook it into the frame. Always a good idea to, if it's no grease on there or it's dry, just to put a little dab of grease on there just to help prevent it from wearing. So now we'll hook up our other bracket. And again, it's got that locking finger that goes into the hole. Once that's tight, we'll just install our last bracket. Same process. I just want to take that little finger and insert it into the hole. And there, your suspension plate is in place and your frame is back together. So now we can put in our motor and transmission. Put our three bolts back in. Tighten the back down with our ratchet wrench. And now we're ready to tip our machine back up on its feet. So our next step will be put the back on. set my pump down into the general location so it's out of our way. Now the back goes on. You'll see it has two little metal fingers that are stamped into the back and they go down over this edge. So we just lift it up into place. So with it the back in place, you want to line up that white plastic connector so that the extruding tab is straight up and down. Bring your back into place so that can poke through. Once it pokes through, just rotate it and that will keep the top and just rotate it and that will keep the back into place while you put your two screws back in. So now we're ready to install our pump. We'll insert one bracket into position just by lining the slots up, rotating it, let it hang down, put our hose on, and then we're just going to introduce the pump onto the motor shaft, take our top clip, insert it into the the motor, the same as the bottom one did. And don't forget to put your clamp on that hose. And remember, we have to reinstall our retainer for the drain hose into the frame, just by pushing it into place. So we'll install our harness onto the motor. We'll remember to install the pin that helps keep the harness up out of the way into the transmission. 
way. Lining up the hole and pushing it upwards. Now that that's done, we just want to connect the actual wiring harness to the motor by just lining it up and pushing it on. There we go. So now we're going to put our drive lug in place. Now our drive lug has two slots in it. And those two slots are going on top of these two fingers sticking up on the basket drive. So you just want to lower it in place, rotate it till you're lined up with those, and then push it all the way on. So with your dry lug, you may have to just tap it down onto place. So now we're ready to put our basket back in. Set it down on top of the lug. So with our tub in place, we're just going to put the lock nut on. And now we're just going to screw the nut down into place and tighten it up. And again, if you don't have the specialized wrench, you can use just a regular flat style wrench. Just want to be a little careful as you swing the hammer. I'm using a composite hammer, but you can use a ball peen. You just don't want to be coming back too far and possibly chipping your tub when you're whacking at it. So now we're just going to install our tub ring. So we just insert the, the recessed portion so it goes underneath the water distributor. Make sure all of these tabs are on the outside of the tub before you start clicking them into place. Some of them like to hide down inside and makes the job impossible. And once you're sure you have them all on the outside, just push downward to lock them. There. Now we just need to put the pieces of our agitator back in. And again, if your washer has one of these agitator assist components, you'll put it back in just by taking one pin, dropping it down into that hole in the drive lug, and put the retainer in place. And it doesn't matter whether it's on this side or this side. It'll align itself when it goes to operate. With that in place, you can put your agitator back in. And once that's secured, we'll put the cap back in. Press downward on it for it to lock into place. And then finally, your fabric softener dispenser. Snap that into place. So we want to make sure we install our pressure hose. So slide it down through the strain relief on the side of the tub. Line it up with the port and just push it straight down. Make sure it's well seated. And now we can put our cabinet on. So now to install your cabinet, you just want to take notice that on your frame, in all four corners, there's a little metal pin sticking up. One here, one in the very back, and the same thing on the other side. Now those pins are there to lock into your cabinet. So to put your cabinet on, we're just gonna lift our lid, take hold of it, raise it up, and then you wanna tip it towards yourself and just begin to settle the cabinet in against the front edge and tip it forward. By doing it that way, these ones automatically drop into place and then you just make sure the back of your cabinet drops down into the ones in the back. Your cabinet in position, just bring your back into place. Take your clip, hook it into the back, pull forward, and snap it down into the cabinet. And your cabinet is locked on. 
Now all we need to do is connect our electrical harness for our lid switch. And now we're just going to flip our console forward, guiding in our curved hooks into the hole in the back corner, and snap it down into place. And there, parts installed, washers all back together. Thank you.